Hello and welcome to Hippolo Saturday webinar, December 1st. Today we have James Charles Chanley, and we're going to start with some announcements. Uh, there's going to be a Reiki teacher class, January 12th and 13th. And Jim, how do people let you know they want to sign up for that? Well, I had some people uh, write to me on my email, and I put their name on a list. But um, I'm going to also have, uh, whenever the PayPal is open, I'll have them send the money to uh, Max, I think. All we'll right. See, you'll see if he has, accepts that responsibility. And um, also, it's a galactic Reiki class, not just a Reiki class. It's the galactic Reiki teacher class. Thank you, Jim. Ian, you want to tell us a little bit about the Friday channeling group? Sure, thank you. Um, every Friday afternoon at 4.30 Eastern, we have a channeling practice group, and it's a place where all of us would-be channelers get together with some experienced channelers, and we practice channeling and share, share techniques and methods, and that you can find the group on Facebook. There's a Facebook page called Hucolo Weekly Channeling Practice Group, and just click join to become a member. It is free. And again, we have a video conference every Friday afternoon at 4.30 Eastern. So we look forward to having you join us sometime. Excellent. Thank you, Ian. And now Will is going to do the last announcement, and then we'll move on to blessings. We're starting with Will. And before we do that, your microphone is a little bit muffled. Okay. Does everybody hear yes. that? Yes. 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 Okay. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, now I'm in the camera. There you go. Um, today, December 1st, is World AIDS Day, celebrating the 30th year. And this is a day that we raise awareness of HIV and AIDS with the goal of finding a cure and ending the epidemic, the pandemic that has affected humanity. Um, so let's find, if you don't know much, uh, the theme for 2018 is know your status. Um, I know my status. Do you know yours? Okay. Um, research. AIDS. Just look at look at who's celebrating World AIDS AIDS Day today, and um, let's take a moment to remember all those who have passed on from HIV and AIDS, and those explorers who came here and incarnated in in this lifetime to experience this, so that we can experience what we are experiencing. Uh, they're starting to talk already, so I'll just jump right into the blessing here. Hur hart karskisha, so to ora anata tarisha shashoko ohur hursh, ya harhana atitiki we harhashi, yo ho hok a ya hana sasasi, ya har harasakatikiata arshua, ya harasanara tikawa haya, ya har hataka, yo soko onanaha sikia harsa, ya tari uta nanara sakaye chachayeta kura nai. Yaharta, soko onana harata kura nana aria saka ye chacha. Yahara, huta to dona nawa ye ashesha. Yahara, atahara sakana no uhuko or shashia kohaya. Yahara nae to so so oya. Yahara aichia yo kunani, kunani, shahayako. Yahara ta arasana no uhuko ona hashashi. Yahara ta acha shakoyana. Yaya katatari, no no horshishikoya. Namaste. So I wanted to say before you interpret, before you interpret, there's so many times my ego wanted to jump in and go, come on, that's enough. And they're going, oh, no, we have more to say. We have more to say. Chill, <laughs> chill. <laughs> go ahead. We ask that the will of God be upon all of us and upon the earth in general. We know that this illness, this AIDS, has come about upon the world for a reason and for learning purposes. But now it is time for it to be extinguished. Now is the time for it to pass by the wayside. 
and it is no longer a threat to human life in some ways because it has become a chronic illness to many, especially with the kinds of medication that are being issued these days. But God's hand is on the earth, and God's hand will continue to love, guide, and direct each and every one of you as you move forward in this time. May your missions be accomplished with greater ease and greater satisfaction, and may your personality show forth as a bright light, and may God be that light that shows forth. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Barbara. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Barbara. And then Jonathan will be after this one. Slowly but surely, the energy of the universe is seeping into your world and bringing in new enlightenment, new love and new energies. Also, there are good and bad parts to this, and we pray that the good parts are the parts that are accepted and the bad are turned away. We love you and care about you so much. Please remain in light. One moment, please. Hello. We didn't announce we were in the room. We, oh, no, we didn't. Hey, hey. Jonathan? Yes. We didn't announce who was in the room, but we still have Jonathan to do that, and then you can announce who's in your room, and I'll announce who's in mine. Yeah, I think it's Dave, actually, that wanted to do the next blessing. Oh, Dave? Hold on one moment while we do introductions. Sorry for the introduction. We had some more people come in. Do you have chairs? Yes. Yes. Okay. Two chairs. I can get more of them. Okay. Coats, you can put them in the kitchen if you want. All righty then. What are we doing now? I'm just shoving. Dave's blessing. Dave, you ready? Uh, yep. Dave. Hey, guys. Hello, Dave. Aruka Nayoe Ashunde Biunga Deo Nasa Heweka Anna Jagunga Nahioka Bagunda Nahioe Ashi Dua Nahute Bragunga Nayua Eshinga Nasi Ungana Ewashna Esagawe Prekunda Shigwanda Naweyanga Eshude Branga de Wunga Ea Jigovanda Unda Bra Shewa Nasi Ewatanda E Egunga Shibung Evang Anahi Ewas there are many that claim to have the truth within them, but be cautious, my friends, because there are some that will lead you astray. Do not listen to all things that do not resonate with you, but be cautious and know what is right within your soul. Follow the great path and do not become involved in the conspiracy theories or the darknesses that would have you lose faith or become frightened. God wants you to be create, creative, creative and uh, courageous and loving. So follow that path and be a bright light in this world. All right, let's see. We forgot to do introductions, so... Well, uh, it's Jonathan next. 
Oh, Jonathan? No, I think. No, he, he didn't want to do a blessing. Oh, oh, okay. It was David then. Right. Okay. Do we, do we have any more blessings in the room? Any more blessings? All right, move forward. Okay. In, online, we have Christine, Dave, Don, Eva, Ian, um, Jonathan, Karen, Lucia, Michelle, Pamela, Reinhardt, Shear, and myself, Mark. And um, Jim, you want to tell us who's all in the room? Yeah, we have a nice crowd here today. We have Angie and Will and Barbara, Beauty, Gagan, Jack, and Ray. And did I miss anybody? And myself. I am also in the room, although some may not believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, we've had a lot of requests. Uh, do you want to do a meditation and see who comes through? Yes. Uh, let me reiterate some of the requests because we didn't have the live uh, button on whenever they were making some of these requests. Um, Elijah, uh, Grindle, Anubis, Krishna, um, Aroki, Katumi, who else? Octorian, Octorian, Uriel, Uriel, Uriel. Aroki the Lupin. Right Good, he can say that. <laughs> um, anybody else that I missed? Someone's Tony. calling from Marduk. Yeah, what was that, Don? Someone is Ecclesiastic 888 is calling for Marduk. Marduk? Okay. Yes, yes. Excellent. Oh, look at oh. Sink. I, 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 <laughs> who is second that as well? Okay, and what did you say, David? I said uh, Aroki, the Lupine being. Okay, and what was that last request? Oh, that, I, I was just saying I second the Marduk. Okay, Marduk. He was a ancient Sumerian, correct? Yeah, that's correct. correct. Based on what I know, very little. That's okay. Awesome. There were very two, good. Two I'm more uh, yes? requests. Uh, Douglas the Telepath and Archangel Michael. Okay, that's two angels now, Uriel and Michael. And Douglas the Telepath, I don't know who that is, but if he comes through, more power to him. So, um, all right, I'm going to do, they're going to have to do one of those take a number and stand in line because there's quite a few here right now. And I don't know who's allowed to come first. The greatest messages will come first and then they will be followed by uh, important messages afterwards. Much love to you all and I'm going to do a little meditation. Is there anything we're forgetting before I start? All right, then. Very good. Um, thanking God. Thanking God, of course. Much love to God for this beautiful day. So, and hopefully he blesses each and every one of you with wisdom and truth today. And a message that you can take with you and put into use in some way. Thank you. <sighs> I am Krishna. Hello and welcome. Greetings to you all. 
It is a very pleasant day from where I sit. There are many good attitudes among you, and that you may have a wonderful day. I give you my blessings. And give each other your blessings and energies of positivity, one to another, to encourage great growth in spirituality, in understanding and in your missions together, for they will sometimes overlap in ways that you may not foresee. I am here to be a consciousness for you in a way that you must ask questions to receive enlightenment from me. But let me tell you this, all enlightenment comes from God, the Father, the great I am, the great Yeshua, the great whoever your name is for him. He has many names and some are misconstrued one with another and they come from many places and many species. But let us all be of one mind today and bring him through in his purest form if we can. Are there questions for me today that I may answer for you? I think first on our list is Nivi. Yes, thank you. And this is Nivi Krishna. How are you? I am always well. In the Bhagavad Gita, um, you are being referred to as uh, the Supreme Godhead Personality. Um, can you explain that uh, name? The Supreme Godhead Personality. You see, God has many aspects. He has many personalities because he's all personalities that are positive, of course. And so you see many different personalities around the world. But my personality that he has brought for me is the one of divine love. The one that is heartfelt and pushes out great light into the world so that others might be encouraged to follow God and to follow his guidance. Yes, they call me that person, but I take only that part of personality that is given to me from him. There are many other divine personalities within God, that of healing, compassion, beauty, creativity, understanding, wisdom, I could go on and on looking at the divine aspects of God. And yes, I do embody more than one of these aspects at this time, but I am only here because I am one face of many faces that he shows to the earth. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Dwarka, um, about how did you create it, um, how was it flooded or submerged, uh, and for a long time the Indian government uh, doesn't allow people to go there, and recently they started to dig and uh, seek underwater. Uh, can you tell us also what are they going to find there? It is that there is information there. The information that is there, they do not want you to see quite yet because it is a little too advanced, a little too frightening perhaps because the, those times were times of great honesty and pure truth poured out of the, uh, the cosmos and the universe and God created a place for these things to be as you find that the tablets were in caves, some of the places that were libraries for the Sumerians became uh, opened up, but all these things have not yet been interpreted completely. And so they are still working on many of the interpretations of the things they have found there. And the sites they are seeing there are very unusual. 
you understand that one day this all will come to light and all things will be revealed to the human race when it is necessary. It was written that Dwarka is made of gold. Is it true? There is much gold there, yes. Made of go gold, not completely, but mostly. And how was it submerged underwater? That is uh, because of seismic activity. God decided to bring it low so that it could be exposed only at the right time. Um, it also was written that you fought against um, alien spacecrafts and nuclear explosions. What, was it true? Yeah, of course. You see, your past is very dimly lit by words. If you would read the passages that are written in some of the tablets that have not yet been deciphered, you will find that there has been many people visiting here, and many people have had different conquests and engagements with the outside world. Um, it also said that you had an artifact, um, so, like a metal that goes around your finger with uh, 108 sharp edges. Um, was it also true? What kind of an artifact was it? It it was more around my wrist than around my finger because my fingers would be cut if it was around my finger. But it is that these, it was each point, uh, each of the points on this wrist band had different understandings and different holographic um, visions that told of great and wonderful wisdoms and understandings of God. And also it could take me places that I needed to go for, I needed to also be other places other than this planet at times. And did you live during the times of Anuman, the monkey god? Yes, I did not agree with all those different things, and he was not from this planet. Uh, which race is he from? That I cannot tell you the name of because it has changed so many times and still continues to change. There are many people that think that it, he was Anunnaki, but he was not. The thing is about this monkey king is that he was a hybrid that was created and was not a pure uh, being of any kind. Okay, thank you. And one last question uh, or a message. Do you have a message for uh, this community, for the Hukulo community? There is always messages for this community because it is one that is full of missions and full of upward motion. But remember, to keep your eyes on God and the light, call on us when you are needed, needing help, and do not get caught up in um, your own self-awareness too much. But move forward as you discover who you are, but do not get caught up in the identities from the past or the future. Remember, the missions are to help others on this earth, not only yourself. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a question. There is a question within the house. <laughs> so what race are you? So many of the Hindu gods, as they say, um, have different faces and different colors and are associated. What? I am associated with Syria because Syria is somewhere that I have been also, but I'm also as affiliated with the universe. I am more of a creator personality than I am of a species personality, and I relate to all species, 
but I have a special love for the Syrians, for they have brought great peace to their people and great understanding and energies. They use them very wisely, and I would like to be considered helpful in that project. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Namaste. And namaste to you as well. I came first today. Elijah was going to come first, but his message is a little more harsh. He felt that he should not come first, but start the day on a positive note. Are there any more questions? Well, I see a couple in the YouTube chat. Um, uh, they want to know about your um, relationship to a place, I hope I can pronounce this right, Vaikuntha and the Kalish Mountain. There, Kalash, yes. <laughs> and Vaikuntha. Vanguta, yes. I understand. There, you must understand that I have relationships with many different places, but these are holy places for me, for they are places that I worshipped uh, myself, my God, from there. I kept myself in good form by becoming part of these places, becoming a great essence there. And there were the relics were given to me from, and from these places is great holiness and still are great energies present. I could say more, but I choose to hold off on that for now. Does this Thanks. make you more aware of what that means? I was asking the question for someone on the YouTube chat, so I... I, I, I understand I, completely. Um, I think that covers the questions I see in the chats. Um, perhaps it's time to bring on the next guest. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. There is one more question in the room. Oh, great. Thank you. If there were questions around you, I'd like to speak up. Yes. <laughs> My question is, um, is your word written in Bhagavad Gita and... There's many of my words written in the Bhagavad Gita, if that is how you pronounce it here. But there are some things that have been added over the years by man and that do not resonate as the truth for these days. You must understand that when books of scripture are written, they are pertaining to eternity, but also to the era of which they were written within. And as you see that they are past in their century, in their culture, you must bring truth from these writings to your culture that may be difficult to translate into your culture. But leave the past behind. You see, if there is a part of the scriptures that only dwells with the past, leave the past behind and put the truth in your present moment. If you can relate truth to this moment in time with great joy, love, wisdom and understanding that it is eternal truth and not just cultural truth. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And there is much cultural truth written in many of the scriptural books, but you must associate the beauty and pureness of eternity with all cultures, those that pass through and can be learned and assimilated by all the cultures thereafter. God's love 
does not just live in one culture, but in all cultures. But eating shellfish may only live in one culture and no others. You see, at that time, they could not clean them properly or could not make it a proper part of their diet. And so they would become sick if they ate it. And so that is part, part of their culture that you can leave behind. The truth is you will know in your heart those things that are true and eternal and move forward through the, all cultures, and you will know those things that do not. Much love to you. Be well and blessed. Do you have um, any teaching for us today? Teachings for you today are this. You must all lift one another up. You are all part of the Spirit of God. This has been taught many times in your lifetime, that you must lift one another, because if one of you should fall, the others must help to rise them up. And if they do not do that, then the chain is broken, and it is not repaired properly. For all souls are important to God. And if you lose this light, that is the soul. If they are left behind, then a piece of the puzzle is also left behind. And how is the world to see the beautiful picture of God's will if some of the pieces are missing? Of course, it is possible that some of the pieces may not have been part of the full, fullest part of the picture. But still, when you look at the puzzle without these pieces, it seems incomplete. Help each other to complete the picture of God's will. Complete the picture that is the fullness that he wishes for all. Now, of course, if someone falls by the wayside and he knows that they are not going to recover and no one is there to help them recover, he may find someone to fill in with that peace. And if you see them rising up to fill in, embrace them, love them, do not question God's choices. Do not question what he does in his great wisdom. For you are only human and cannot see the, the picture of the universe as it is put together. So your eyes may be deceived by a very small part of the picture allow and accept love and be wise to know that when someone is trying to do right and good you should lift them up and embrace them sometimes that is not easy for they're so different than yourself and they're from such a different place than what you can understand. But yet you can love them in God's eyes because he made them and he is part of them. So let them be embraced, if not with your likeness, but with your loveness, with your understanding that God is in all. Do not judge. And that is also do not judge yourself too harshly. Of course, you have to do introspection and you must find the ways to improve. But usually when you look at the light, 
you cannot find any darkness. For the light overpowers you. And if you keep yourself in the light, darkness will be overpowered. And when you run into darkness, usually it is because the light is not what you were looking at at that moment. Of course, there are deaths and there are negativities on the earth, but that's not necessarily darkness. That is part of the way of life the way it was created. But look for the light and let it blind you so that darkness cannot be seen. Thank you. You're welcome. And my time is done. Can I ask one more question before you go? If you wish. Can you talk about the concept of Svaha? Hmm. Will they understand? Can you explain it to them? To me, it's more than just the meaning of the syllables and the words that have been, that have come later that it's a technique of manifestation yes that built with intent is what we speak is what comes into being correct that is right did everyone get that now let me go forth with that you. you see words have power so if you are ma manifesting things into your world and you say a lot of negative things how can they manifest how can the most positive and wonderful things that you want need and desire manifest if you cannot be positive in your life if you say i don't believe this i can't do that i won't be this way I won't, 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 I can't, can't, can't. And you're judging other people. You must be a positive person to manifest. Every word that comes out of your mouth has power and energies. Now, you put the energy in it that it has. Let me give you an example. If you were saying, I really hate that. The word hate has a power that overcomes any positive thought process you had put behind it. Even if you're saying, I hate evil, forgive me. But you must not speak of that which you do not want to manifest. Speak positively. Speak in words of love, compassion, and positivity. There are ways to say everything in this life in a positive way. And that has power for your manifestation because guess what? It falls on the ears of the universe as a great gift because so few can speak in positive realms more than just a few minutes. You are used to judging everything on the planet. You are used to judging yourself. You're used to trying to find the negativity so that maybe you can get rid of it. But if you are finding the positivity, the negativity is already rooted out. If you are finding the great positive parts of your life, the negativity falls away. Does it not? So manifest with positivity. Speak with great truths, what you need, want, and desire. 
but bring that into your excitement. Speak with excitement about God. Speak with excitement about what you need, want, and desire, so that he may be able to give you those things and refrain from speaking in negative tones and words, for they push your desires away. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. That's it. Is that what you were looking for? Nail on the head. Gratitude. Infinite gratitude. Shokyarana eskohiyasa. Nantukriya foshunzidi aranana. Fasasunza kushiyash. Sepithiras and the blessings upon all of you lay the fire of God burn in your soul so that you may shine out to the world and light other fires. Let this earth be a bright light in the universe, not just a few candle lights here and there, but one flame for God. For that's what he looks for, the positive, the beauty. Do you think he sits and looks for your negativity? That would be tedious and tiresome for him. But he looks for that fire, that beauty, that love, that compassion. And he wants to give you more of it because when he does, when you want that in your life, it burns out that tedious old stuff. Bring joy to your life. Bring fire to your life. Live as if it matters. And some of you are going, Oh, I cannot seem to bring myself out of this darkness that is here because you are sitting in a dark room with the windows closed. How are you ever going to find the light within if you don't seek it? If you ponder the darkness and the negativity and the sadness and the sorrow, if you ponder these things, then that is who you will be. If you ponder on the negative parts of your life, paying bills and running errands and doing whatever it is that you don't want to do, that is how you're going to be. And your light will be very dim on the earth. And I know you've heard it said before. Some people wake up and they do this or that and they go to work and what you should do is this. Wake up! Go to work! Have a wonderful day. Make it a great day. Make it a beautiful day. Make it heartfelt. Don't just go there. <laughs> you did it, though. You just went there. <laughs> yes. You understand? Absolutely. So it's a, your attitude about what these things are that makes a difference. You can do the same thing with a different attitude. Much love. Blessings be with you. Thank you so much. I am Elijah. Welcome.
I almost hesitate to come in after such a positive and wonderful message. But there are things that need spoken to, different things that happen in your lives. And Krishna was right. You must always look for the greatest and most beautiful things. But some of you suffer with a thing called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when you know that you are doing wrong, but yet you continue to do it, hoping that no one will find out, hoping that it won't be seen, hoping that things will turn out right no matter what you're doing. But with this particular group of people, hypocrisy can be deadly. It can destroy a mission. If someone thinks that you are being a wonderful, great person and then finds out your hypocrisy, you have changed the whole view. Their view has changed and their light may, have, may not shine after that. But I don't want to be negative but you know who you are and why I have to speak about that. It is a hidden poison that must be removed. And that is not to say that otherwise you're not being positive. Many of you are being very positive despite your hypocrisy, but you know that it must go when that time to shine, that time to be in the public eye comes. And that is what I'm talking about. Those people that are going to be in the public eye, you must shed hypocrisy. For it will not fly. They will find out. And they will not follow. And that's all I have to say. But other than that, I want to bring you a positive message. I love you all very much, and God does too. Krishna was speaking from the light of the greatest light there, there can be. And I want that to shine in on you as well, and just blow away that hypocrisy. Because you cannot be blinded by the brightest light if, there, if that exists within you. Because you will feel it. It will pull on you. Let God take care of that. Don't judge yourself. Just let God take care of it. Just let it go. Just say, all right, it's time for me not to do that anymore. Whatever it is, it may be more than one thing that you know that if people found out, they would not be happy about. And if you're going to be in the popular guy, you need to be a good example. That's all there is to it. And if you can't be a good example, then you shouldn't be in the public eye. I, I have to go, and I do not want to seem negative, but you understand how that can hold someone back. The light is waiting for you to be full, your joy to be full. And some of these things are not joyful. <laughs> but other things you may say, yes, but I can't give that up for this reason, that reason, or the other. But come to God. Lay it before him. And if he says it must go, then it must. My love and blessings to you all. There are many waiting, so I'm not going to take any more time. Thank you very much for your message.
This is Uriel. Welcome. A few of you have asked for me, and so I've decided to come. Are there many questions for me? I'm sure that there's at least one or two. <coughs> Michael is also here with me, and we are we are here to uh, answer some questions if you have it. Michelle, did you want to start? Can you unmute? Oh, very well. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Hi, Uriel. Um, Greetings. I was just wondering. Hi. I was just wondering um, if you could give us an update on how the ascension is going, and um, are we close to translating into the fifth dimension? Could you just give us an update on that? And there also, are, can you give us a blessing in, in angelic light language, please? Of course, of course. Um, the first question is: How are we doing on the ascension? How are you doing on the Ascension? And I say, how are we doing? Because we are helping with it as well. Many people are helping with the Ascension of your planet. But it is not going as well as some may think. Some may look around them and all they see is the people that are ready to ascend. Whereas there's a world full of people out there and many of them are not ready. Now, fear not. The world will be ready when God is ready to bring the world into that ascended state. But the ascension is going well. It cannot be stopped at this point. The fire of God has come to a place where it cannot be stopped. It is going to continue. It is going to be continuous. And it's going to be um, getting stronger all of the time. Let me also say this. There are those people that are trying to ascend right now, that they, their work is done. They are trying to ascend at this most difficult time when the energies of the earth are very disruptive, when the energies of the earth are very strongly um, uneven and unbalanced. It is a difficult task. It's not impossible with the right faith and with the right the right attitude and the right positivity but it is surely a very difficult thing to do i pray that those that are trying to do this at this time will make it through now in regards to that i am also going to give you a blessing this will benefit those that are trying to translate as it were into the next realm and those that are trying to become greater and brighter in the light of god one moment please sia zanzura vatikara turia adunai yangadi ondor bisi si banjua yashikara bandi si Si la manura ki yavaza, su shiojun vi azota, ki taruatas, yato wandi kasavindi tira, pacham shalom yatu wa, hakwati usuri amadu, ura randi kasasin zibeti tonamura, futi asas, sanzavoti karavandi kara, lata shoji gora. Shikatorvasa unda anchendi. Sukara sataturia. Is there any more questions? Yes. Yes, we have a few. Um, she is next and then Reinhardt. Very well. Greetings, Uriel. How are you? I am well. Um, you spoke about the disruptive energies of the earth and I actually thought about it and it's been several years I think since 2016 um, when we reached that point uh, into the energy cloud and since then it's always disruptive or off balance do you see uh, when is it going to balance itself like it used to be? Well, there, 
there are many things that is that are causing this it is not just that it's off balance or on its own but there are reasons for that imbalance and one of those is the grand solar minimum and i don't know if anyone knows what that is but it is that the uh, sun is reacting in a very different way than it has for a while it's resting in a sense and the sun spots are not are not as I, I'm not sure how to explain it exactly, but that is something that causes volcanoes and uh, earthquakes and things of this nature and even weather changes. But also your uh, people on your planet have created their own weather forecasts, which also is very disruptive to the Earth. And also there is axis problems where the axis is a little bit off and so the equator is not co correct with the in the balance of the sun so there are many things and i don't want to say destructive or or things of that nature but they are things that are facts and they will cause different kinds of outcomes also the center of the galaxy you, the energies that are in the center of the galaxy are hitting the Earth as well at this time. It is what is supposed to be for this time and place. It is not supposed to be easy, necessarily. You, but you are to gain the energy, the beauty, the, the light, to be able to move through it in a more easily, in a way that's more easy. And that is your quest. That is your mission in some parts, is to become that person that can move freely even through all these different things. Thank you very much and much love to you. Much love to you as well. Oh, this is Reinhard. Hello, regards, uh, Uriel. Greeting. I have a question. Um, can you help me to find out which angel is specially assigned to me? You have a guardian angel. Every human has a guardian angel that is with them most of the time. Your guardian angel is Maziel. And Maziel is a very good angel indeed. But there are also other angels that are around you and are that are helping you. You have uh, help from Raziel, from Sandalfon, and from Ariel. So yes, you're in good company. Many, many thanks for you're letting me know. And um, I wish you a good day. And you are blessed. Thank you. Thank you for your eyes being open to many, many things. You are a special individual, and I feel your energy. And know that you have come a long way in the, a process very quickly. Yes, I know. This was my question. You are welcome. Thank you. Anyone? Are there, any, are there any questions in the room? Yes, there is. Very well. Yes. Several weeks ago, the Earth experienced like a vibration, sub sounding vibration. Yes. And a lot of people on the internet in this room, including myself, would like to know that. What it what caused it? Is this the one from Madagascar? Area? Yes, it is. Right, this energy that uh, you are thinking of yes. is not from the Earth. Oh. It was from a ship, and that ship is under the Earth at that right. place. It was not a seismic reaction, but a sonic reaction, and this sonic reaction was intentional they were sending out a distressed signal because this particular ship 
it was very large and it has been there for quite a long time and it needs to get out and at this point the the way that it's supposed to get out was to transport out on a beam to uh, a vibrational beam that would take it from this place and reestablish it in another place well that did not work and so th they had to send out um, a long distress signal and it was answered good i am glad at that does everyone know what i am speaking of i'm sure a few of you don't there was a deep resonating signal that came from i'm not sure uh, it came from around the madagascar area yes. i think through the north um northeast was it northwest northwest and it was discovered by many of the seismic groups although it was not a seismic reading it doesn't did not have all the earmarks of a seismic reading exactly. it only had one of the three variables of a a seismic yes. reading and so they were curious because it did affect the entire earth in the sense that it was <laughs> heard by the entire planet <clears throat> now, that being said, it was also heard outside of the planet, and that is where it needed to be heard. And they were sent a uh, transporter beam, and they are no longer there. Good. And thank you very much. You are that. welcome. Steve Robert has a question. And there's another question, I think, in the room as well. It goes, Steve, go ahead. <laughs> well, greetings, Uriel. Greetings. Excellent to connect with you. Um, yeah, I feel very connected to, uh, of course, your friend Michael. Um, of course. Yes, and and I was wanted to, to query if, if I could ask you to network. I have a soul friend. I feel like she's my soul sibling in my soul group, if you will. Yes. She's, uh, she's really struggling from the side effects of immunotherapy that she's getting for lymphoma. And uh, I've been trying to intervene. I just wanted to ask if you could uh, if you could network amongst your Super 7, if you will, to uh, assist her in any, any way. And she knows that you're coming. So I told her multiple times to relax and allow if she still feels a presence. And I would love if you would, uh, if you would do what you can. Thank you so much. We will send out an energy to her that she will not be able to deny. Excellent. Thank and you. This will, this will help her in her recovery. If she believes that it will, yes. Remember, she must accept this and take it into her being as a healing effect. But let this energy just go. Tell her to let the energy go through her entire body and let it resonate for a while. Do not send it out. Just let it resonate. Allow it to be there. Allow it to do its work. And this will help her a great deal. All right. Thank you, Uriel. I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Ah, right. oh, yes. I receive. Thank you. Good. And next. In regards to, um, I want to stay on the, the, the topic of the energy. Yesterday, there was also a large energy distribution on the planet yes can you explain what that was as well where did you feel it came from or they did not say where it came from no it was actually from antarctica the reason for this this uh was that there is a there is still another ship there yes uh, from the same species that is also subterranean but the reason for this transmission was to make sure that um everything was status quo uh they did not actually need to be released or anything of that nature uh, you're going to find that there will be several energy beams released on this planet it will not stop for 
at least not for a while. And until first contact, you were going to have suspicious energy beams and energy uh, releases. But after that, they will all be explained. Thank you. Very well. Anyone else? Jonathan Kerr? Yes. Greetings, Uriel. Can Greet. you hear me okay? I can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes can you hear me now? Uh, yes, can, can you hear now? me? Yes, now I can. <laughs> Good. Um, two days ago, I was uh, shared information about, and I've, I've, I've been sharing a, a lot about uh, the type of waves coming in, energy waves. This yeah. one was referred to as a deep wave, which I have never heard of before. I've seen images of big waves and things of that nature. Uh, can you elaborate more upon the deep wave that is incoming? The deep wave is when there is a ship or an object that is deep within the Earth. And it is not seismic in, in nature, but they can release uh, vibrational emittances. They can uh, contact other uh, parts of their other parts of the earth and realms with these deep emittances and they are heard outside the earth as well okay thank you very much you're welcome I do have another question. yes around the earth right now is there a blue hue of a, a, a field a blue hue the seventh dimensional beings are putting a field around the earth at this time for greater protection against Wasodraka and other seventh dimensional beings that are not welcome and so yes there is protection around the earth at this time it is not quite finished it's uh but uh, seventh dimensional beings are working to protect your planet from outside attacks yes and if you know anything about the Wasadraka, they're very, uh, they have uh, harmed several people, but they will not do that anymore. A time of healing for those that were wounded is now uh, come. Thank you. Nyakarash, Marahati. Anything else? I have a question. There is another question here. It's just kind of like confirmation for me. Uh, every morning, not every morning, but every once a week, I work with the archangels for the 12 chakras to help me to align and to open more. Yes. I just want confirmation that this is working and helping me yes. to open heart. Absolutely. Uh, do you feel any differently? Yeah, I do feel different. Well, this is because it is working. Okay. The um, <laughs> that would, that is your confirmation, but I can also confirm that your heart chakra is much healthier than it has been. It seems like you're also con feeling a lot more joy right now yes, than you have been feeling in the past. You ha are one that suffers from doubt and That's fall nice. into uh, negativity because you have self-doubts about yourself more than anybody else but uh, but that when you have self-doubts then you doubt everybody else but the thing is right now you're in a more positive realm you are actually helping people you're actually bringing about a great change in your own life because of your actions because of what you're doing with yourself and all of the chakra work and so continue to do that because it's really helping you you're becoming a brighter light you're becoming more helpful and this help that you're giving is very very valuable and this is also i'm assuming if i get out like helping with my healing yes healing is part of what god wants to do through this when the chakras are healthy the body is healthier okay. because those are energy fields that dictate and govern different parts of the body soul spirit and emotions so you are healing yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically. <coughs> Thank you very much. Very well. And he needs a drink. One moment. 
while you're drinking, uh, I see a few uh, questions in the YouTube chat. Very um, well. Miriam asks, what can you say about Twin Flames? I'm, uh, Twin Flames are difficult to talk about because everyone has a different understanding of what they are. A, a true Twin Flame is a soul divided. And that can come from centuries ago or, or from just recently. But mostly when a, when a soul is divided, there is a reason for it. One part of it goes one place. The other part goes into another place. And they both have a mission to do. And usually a divided soul is a powerful soul. Usually it is one that is not just an average of soul, but it has a greater creativity about it, a greater necessity for it, usually from the angel, the creator, or the uh, L worlds, uh, from the God realms. And now, when twin flames come together, it's very rare. You may say, but there's I was told that my twin flame is here in this, there, and the other place. Um, that when they come together, they make one flame. They are not different. They are the same. They create one full fire. And when they come together, they are unquenchable in the sense that that is a huge and beautiful fire that cannot be put out. Not to say that there will not be difficulties, depending where that flame comes together at. If they come together on a human realm, it can be very difficult because there is a lot of uh, harshness in this realm. If they come together in the serious realm, they, it can be a little better or whatever. But do not expect to find your twin flame easily, for they are usually very separated for a good reason. And then they, God knows when they are going to come back together. Now, there are soulmates. That is something different. You have a soul family. And in that soul family, you have at least one or two soulmates. That's different than a twin flame but it has a very similar kind of reaction. When soulmates come together, they are incredibly compatible. They're incredibly um, uh, passionate, usually. And they usually uh, have more than one reason to be together. And those kind of people do come together a lot more often because they travel in their soul family. You have a large soul family. It could be 30, 40, 50 people in the oversoul that you travel through lives together. So you may have more than one soul mate as far as that is concerned. So do not, do not mix them up. There are soul mates and then there are twin flames. Twin flames are, you will know a couple that are twin flames. They will be on they're a fire. They both are pure energy, it would seem. And they both, it's, it's an unquenchable fire. That's all I can say. Soulmates are different. They can have different interests, different thought processes. And, uh, but when soulmates come together, they're like almost the same person. So that is the difference. Does that Thank make you. Sense? Yes. Don is next. Don. Blessings, Uriel. It's nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Um. Okay. I con consulted my higher self and my source self, and I was instructed to ground myself to this universe in order to flush the oceans, which I am doing. I am flushing them with the oceans of the Milky Way galaxy in order to remove the radiation and increase the life because these oceans were dying. Can you give me an update, please? Thank you. 
they're in better shape than they were. Absolutely. The, you're getting some help from others as well. So you're not doing this alone. And it's, it's, a, it's a tall order to do this anyway. But um, the Claire's are helping. Um, and there are some outside help from different species. But they're intermittent, if you know what I mean. But uh, yes, continue to do what you're doing. It is working. Thank you very much. Elsa is next. Elsa. Hello, Uriel. It's lovely to speak to you. Lovely to speak to you as well. Um, about three years ago, I started to feel a very deep connection with you. And um, I actually have had a picture of you by my bed for, well, since then. Um, and then I was lucky enough to meet with Michelle from this group who I know is really connected with you. Um, and she's been um, sending me healing energy, um, which has been really good. And I just wondered um, what that connection means and how I'll use it in the future, because it feels quite strong and quite important. I wondered whether maybe I can use the healing energy at some time, maybe I could help others. Or... Absolutely, my dear. Healing energy is, when it comes in, it can be sent out to others as well, because healing energy never stops. Energy doesn't stop with one person. It moves throughout them and is released to those who need it. Your mother, is getting some of that healing energy from you because and from me through you and from Michelle through me through you through all these different um, ways you understand that every human is connected their soul light connects one to another and it also connects to the angels and to the God realms so when we send healing energy that is an energy that you can pass on and uh, intend to help others as well. It does not just heal you, but it heals those around you, if you allow it to. Or if I should say, if they allow it to. And yes, we do have a good connection. And yes, I do work with you personally. Thank you. That's really interesting. So that means if we can really allow that healing energy to flow, it's just... Um, Allow. It's going to help everybody who we are in contact with. Correct. Because the, the energies that you give off when you are around anyone, anyone here can give off healing energies to anyone they wish to. Now, the other person can accept it or, or not. But I would hope that if they need healing, they would accept it. But you have free will to accept that healing energy when they give it to you. Thank you. That's really great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I believe we have one last question in the YouTube chat. Uh, Jess asks, can you please explain more about the different types of creator beings and their mission in the ascension process now? There are several creator beings on your planet, impartial. No full creator being is on this planet. Just a small portion of a creator being is in a person. That's why you cannot use, those of you that are creator beings cannot use all power because you are held within a human body which does not have that allowance. You may accept many gifts of spirituality you may accept what it is you have to do for your mission but you will not be given more power than what is needed for your mission so therefore do not expect to be all powerful or mighty like you were in the creator realms but accept that you have limitations when you are here some more than others depending on the, the mission that you accepted to do. You may have accepted to do a great mission, and so your powers might be a little greater. 
but you if you accepted to do a mission to fill a place that was not being filled you may not have a great amount of power and a great amount of abilities but your mission will be carried out with your 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 will and intent and with great effort and work so do not look at the creator beings as being not more than human for the most part they are just human but they just have um they have come in to do a job they must deal with the fact that they are human they must deal with the fact that they do not have creator being abilities and do a lot of work to get uh, their mission done. Now, many creator beings are maladjusted. Let me tell you why. They come into the earth and they have lost all their great abilities. And so they wish they had them. They they want and desire those abilities back again. So they start imagining some things that are greater for them to make themselves feel as good as they did in the creator realms. Stop it. <laughs> because it's not going to help you. You must be realistic. You must know that you are a human. In a, with a creator being port, parts of creator beings within you so you have to do what you have to do to move forward now some of you do have greater powers some of you do have these greater things but to stop and imagine that you're that you're greater than you imagine on this planet is a waste of time and will hold you back on your mission And I'm not saying that to be negative. I just want you to get your mission in order and your priorities straight. A lot of you do have them straight, but some of you are a little delusional. Not, I'm just saying, every now and then. You understand? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, just thanks you and says that answer absolutely resonates for her, for him. Good. Is that what they wrote? <laughs> yes. All right. Is there another waiting in the wings? Yes, there is one more that wants to come through very much. <laughs> very much. Oh, very much. Thank you so much for, for your time and your wisdom. Yes, I will bring this person through after I take one drink of water. Gratitude for all you have shown. <laughs> Give me a minute. Yeah. All righty then. Nice to see you, Brindle. Greetings, everyone. Um, how are you doing? I think most of us are well. That's good. Somebody called me. There must be some questions. Um, I forget I, who. I, um, uh, I came here especially for you. I got out of my yellow mud bath and... Decided to grace you with my lovely presence. So I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Come well, here. <laughs> Someone in the room has a question. Yeah. Why does Red Riding Hood wear that red hood? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, red, you know. Uh, I think that for the sake of the children, I'll <laughs> refrain. Okay, some children may be watching, so I won't do that. All right. Any questions out there? Uh, sure, go ahead. 
Yeah, Sheer, how's it going? Hey, Grindel, this is Nivy. How are you? Oh, Nivy. Hey, hi, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I wanted to ask you, how do you look like? Uh, what, what is your height? And can you describe your uh, appearance? No. Oh, all right. Um, I'm not good at this because I. some people see me differently. How tall am I, would you say, in Earth? Well, mm -hmm. eh, uh, seven, seven feet tall, six. maybe. Yeah. I, six and a half, seven feet tall. I have a um, snout. snout, but it's not like a crocodile, not like big long thing. No, it's uh, more like a uh, ter Tyrannosaurus Rex yes. kind of looking. Yes. But yes, I still have teeth. Uh, the, the, some of them are sharp and some of them are starting to round out like uh, human teeth because we don't like uh, thrash and eat animals anymore like we used to. Pity. But anyway, um, uh, we do, you know, elegant dining just like you. Yeah. But anyway, um, I have, we don't have... Uh, the tails we used to have, we have them sort of cut so that we can, um, uh, they're not dangerous. You see, when the tail was long, it like bumped into everything. You, know, you turn around and you knocked over a chair. Or, eh, I mean, what you would call a chair in our world. Uh, so uh, uh, breaking things all the time. So uh Tails were not really necessary anymore, so they're sort of cut down so they, they're not flying all around. Um, we have some ridges on our head. We're uh, our, on our planet, on the Zespoid area, we're like brown and green. and We have several different colors, but browns and greens are the, the most popular uh, colors for our people we have some black of course uh but it's a combination some people are black and green some people are green and yellow some are green. you know it is and they're not all just one color so uh, at least not in uh, our world we have we're pretty much two-tone or three-tone so um what is the name of your uh, planet your um I never gave you the name of our planet, uh, but it is Grohokt. Um, Grohokt is the name of our planet. That's in our language because we don't really speak English. So, yeah, we, we sort of have that uh, gravelly sort of uh, diction and everything. So um, that's what it is. Yeah. Does it have a meaning, the name? It means yellow mud. <laughs> awesome. Um, when someone in your culture like misbehaves or talks about love or something that is uh, unconventional in your culture, oh. like how would you treat it? Would you like hit him with your uh, tail? Well, I told you we cut our tails off. So, um, it, I mean, there's short, stumpy things. I, I could try to hit him with that, but. It would be like uh, shadow boxing. So, uh, no, we sort of just um, ignore them for a while if they do something socially unacceptable. It's like you're given the silent treatment for a while. Um, you're allowed to speak about love on our planet. It's just that I'm not allowed to speak about loving humans. That's all. Uh, it's like, what? How can you love those ugly little insects? So, yeah, uh, to me, you're not insects. You're much better. You're more like dogs, you know. You're, you're, you're sort of cute and you're not furry, but nice, nice person. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'll pat you on the head, okay? But okay. I, I enjoy humans. Well, and they don't understand it, so that's awesome. What? With a little sauce. Oh, yeah, they like you with a little sauce. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Feel free to use it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use that in my next set. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? 
Um, thank you. I was just doing some uh, research for the movie. Um, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how's it coming? Um, we're going to shoot uh, next month, uh, and it's going to be pretty good. There's some very good ideas. Good. Did you get Tom Selleck to play me? <laughs> um, the mostly, it's a voice. Um, I'm going to show it one part in the movie, like the, the shark from Jaws. You have to keep it for the best part. Oh, great. I'm a shark from Jaws. <laughs> yeah, uh, and there's some really cool I hope I have good parts. music. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. And, and there's some uh, great concept art. Uh, I wish I could show you. Maybe some other time I'm going to show you. Yeah. Uh, let me explain for those that you don't understand. Nivy is making a movie about when I was on the earth. You And uh, there's uh, my story out there somewhere on the internet about yeah. how I uh, lived in a military body for a while. Um, I don't know where to find that on the internet. Somebody can tell you if you want to see it. I don't know. It's on the Hukulo YouTube page. You can search a Grindle walk-in story and find it. Ah, uh, walk-in story. There it is. Yeah. And now he's making a movie of it. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a short, a short movie. Oh, it's a short movie. No, oh, yeah, no. Like no. Yeah, it's not going to be a feature oh, film. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. Maybe afterwards. Yeah. Short tail. Grindle's <laughs> short tail. I like that. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Nivy. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, who else is there? Dave is next, then Eva. All right, Dave. Oh, and my lovely Eva. Yeah. Okay, Dave. Hey, Grindle. Hey, how's it going, dude? Really good. Good to talk to you again. Oh, great. <laughs> I was. Uh, I had a uh, a question about the O negative blood group. Oh. I didn't, I didn't know if the, its origins were Anunnaki or Draconian or perhaps yeah. Pterosaurian. Can you... uh, actually, it's Anunnaki that did the blood. The blood types changed all those different things. They're uh, the ones that gave you the the actual form of humanity that, that you like the bodies and stuff. Although your colors and your textures are a little different, um, they gave you the actual mold for your. Uh, your out your outline and everything now it's been said that ever uh, so, uh, some other species atlanteans and uh, lemurians and uh, other people also helped with that but uh, they were the main the main ones it is true others did help but the main outcome with the human looking thing that was mostly them the different colors shapes and sizes that came from others down the line so did so, they introduce the negative blood phenotype like the the absence of the rh factor to our bloodline well they uh, they did introduce that it wasn't acceptable at first they wiped it out but then when they were recreating they realized that it was important for survival because uh, there are certain blood types that have a greater immune system than others, and also uh, it it also creates diversity within the DNA and species development. So they they went with it. And can you give a uh, some physical traits that? people with own negative blood will possess that um, would be any different. Like there's some people with Anunnaki DNA and there's some people with O negative blood grouping, but do they necessarily go hand in hand together? Um, I don't know what the different looks would be uh, because I haven't really studied the different uh, species on your planet, the different races, but I know that, um, 
that sometimes the blood groups from Africa and the Middle East can have a great a more similarities than um, other blood groups. Uh, the Native American Indians also have some interesting uh, blood groups as well. Yeah. I don't want to go into that right now. It'd be a, it's like a study or have to do on your own a little bit. Okay. Well, I appreciate the input. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, anyone here? All right. Next. Yep. Hi, uh, Grinda. Oh, am I talking? Oh, Eva. Hey, yes, how, are you? how are you? Um, I'm lovely. I Good. have two questions about you. The first one is, do you have a s split tongue like lizards, or am I imagining that? A split eye? And then whoop. No, oh, tongue. 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 Oh. Um, eh, yeah, it's a little bit at the end, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And what what are your plans for next lifetime? What are my plans for next lifetime? Mm -hmm. I haven't been up to the Oversoul lately to see, but I think that I'll probably not be a reptilian uh, because you know um, it's just I need a change of pace. Yeah, I think I'll probably be a human. I, I really liked being human. When I did the walk-in thing, I learned a whole lot about humanity, and I really enjoyed myself when I was here. And so it, mm, yeah, the ghosts are coming in, yeah. All right. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, I think I would like to be a human. Yeah, I don't know what I have planned, but just a thought. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Christine is next. Christine. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I was wondering, um, there's this new push for um, people getting their DNA tested to... Um, to find out where they're from and what's oh, uh, like ancestry.com and all that stuff. Yes. Oh, okay. Is there, <laughs> since, um, since Dave brought it up about the blood and everything, I was wondering if there's also an alter alternative uh, ulterior motive as to why um, they're pushing it so much. I mean, are they looking for something specific in the blood besides to, you know, sell us on the idea that we want to know where we're from? Well, no, they're just trying to make a lot of money because they're, a lot of people are curious about that. The thing is, they don't give you your alien bloodlines. They don't tell <laughs> you what species you're from. They don't say, oh, you are from uh israel but you're also octorian you know they don't do that um they they don't say oh you have three relatives from japan but you have two from the anunnaki yeah they don't do it so so yeah that's the kind of blood test i think they should start now they should start the alien bloodline tests to see oh um, my aunt's a reptilian. Oh, that explains it. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah. And then shuffle them off into the military life, right? Yeah, right. She'd be great in the military. Yeah. Um, does it have anything? Um, are they eventually going to start using this um, into deciding what type of health plan to? Um, oh, my God. Eventually, when things become super evolved on your planet, a health plan will be suited to your individuality, your chemical makeup, your body type. Everything about you will be individualized. You will not have the same health plan as you because the chemical makeup in your body is different. 
you will have to have this, 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 and this to keep you healthy, and you will have to have something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, also, the best minerals and <clears throat> vitamins and minerals may not be as the same for you as for you. You might need the same ones, but in different amounts. A positive idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, the um, experiment that they were doing in China by... Oh, um, Godzilla? No, I'm just no, saying, <laughs> just easy. <laughs> no, I think that's Japan. Um, oh, okay. But right. um, the, um, they cloned or they manipulated the um, DNA of one or two children and they claimed um they were going to create i don't know what in this in these trials wow. they claimed that they stopped all this uh all the scientific know. research but did they really um no you know they have to say they stopped it for uh everybody would poo poo it and be against them and say nasty awful things about them so um but right at this point it's they still have research in several parts of your world um that do these kinds of uh things they're what? trying to wipe out the uh, disease they're trying to enhance and make them superhuman and all these different things uh, so but <laughs> so far it hasn't worked <laughs> i would think america the um the army that does all these uh all this research or that they've been caught doing all this research on civilians as well as their um, military recruits that they would already have something hmm. like this going yeah they they tried their experimenting but they haven't created a superhuman that survives they created a superhuman that's superhuman for about a year and then they start deteriorating rapidly because it's not their dna can't substantiate that kind of activity for more than a, a, a limited period because what happens is it takes all the all the uh, vitamins and minerals in the system and it uh, ex expands them and then it expels them. And they, uh, you have a limited lifespan on this planet. And so what it does is it uses it all up very quickly. Wow, how interesting. That's almost like uh, transplanting other people's organs into your body. Yeah, who would want to do that? But that's all right. Um, yeah, I yeah, you can do that. <laughs> but I uh, I don't know. I was thinking something else. I just don't know what to do. Mm. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Is um, that it? Oh, we have a bunch of questions in the YouTube chat. If you can. All right. Um, Krelek asks, what are the relations between inner earth and the surface civilizations? Have they tried to reveal themselves in the past? Yeah, I know distant past, yes, but not recently. They have not, they're not accepted well enough to integrate to, into the earth, uh, human population yet. So therefore they're waiting for the right time, but people are getting more used to, um, having <coughs> alien interactions and more interested in uh starting to get more curious about it but there's still a ton of people on your planet that are so afraid of aliens that that that's not something that's going to happen right away yeah even if they come out of holes in the earth they're still not going to like them Okay, Krellick had a few more questions. The next was, are all reptilians hairless? Uh, well, we don't have toupees, but yeah, we're pretty hairless. I think most every uh, reptilian I know 
every species is hairless. Yep, yep. It's the way that we evolved. It's the kind of atmosphere. All your reptilians are also ha hairless <laughs> because of <coughs> their environment. Yeah. Okay, Krellick's third question. Are there subspecies or subraces of subspots? Of course. But um, we don't introduce them to you. So they're like the uh, uh, ugly nephews or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, there's subspecies, but they're not as, they're not, uh, as evolved. But they're not on our planet. But there are zespoid species that are less evolved, yes. They're not um, space worthy and they're not evolved as much as we are, but yeah, they're okay. Yeah. Okay. Cami asks Will something big happen soon that will influence us humans quite much? Yeah. Sales from BJs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> um, something big. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, yes, there's going to be many big things, but I can't predict exactly what they are. But according to all the uh, indicators looking at your planet, you're, you're having a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes and incredible weather. So, yes, uh, something's got to give that's going to be very big, yes. And then back to a previous question, uh, Liney asks, what are your eyes like, similar to our own reptiles or alligators? Well, more like alligator eyes. Uh, I mean, we're starting to evolve into a more a human looking eye, but that's not gonna happen for a while. Um, they are still divided. The Elia Shandai Zendi, their eyes are now some of them have more human eyes there in that species. And the friendly reptiles also are developing different kinds of eye uh, modifications due to the fact that they're not in their normal environment anymore. They're spending a lot of time in space. They're spending, um, they've been in space for a couple hundred years now. So things are starting to develop differently they're going to need a different kind of vision to be able to see better and all that. So yes, evolution happens quickly with our, with reptilians. They're more adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. So we probably will eventually adapt. Yeah. All right. I think that catches us up on all the questions. All right. Well, there's not much time left anyway. Yeah. Any questions? No, but can I hug you? Somebody wants to hug me. Oh, my God. You can't show this video to my it's people. Same one. It's me. It's oh, me. yes. Okay. All right. Hug me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I love you. All right. Yeah. Just don't show this video in my home world. Yeah. <laughs> make a YouTube post. Yeah, I don't think they look at your YouTubes anyway, so that's all right. Yeah, all right. All right, then. I'm going to take off. Have a wonderful day. Is there anybody, uh, do you have time left, or are you just going to do blessings, or what? I think we're going to move on to blessings. Did you want to part with one? Oh, uh, you no. Know. <laughs> um, I, actually, I actually will. This will be a rare blessing for you. <laughs> All right. A rare blessing. All right. All right. Now let me see if I can pull one out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Hold on. I have to, I have to configure. Yeah. Yeah. Dear God, thank, thank you for making humans not edible any longer. Um, <laughs> So we can be friendly with them and love them the way we're supposed to. Um, bring light and love to their planet and to ours. 
and help them to understand that yellow mud is healthy. Um, we love you very much, and I pray that everybody is healthy. Yeah, have a great day, and many blessings. Mm, goodbye for now. Goodbye, Grendel. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Have a great day. Oh, it's hard to pray in your language. Yeah. Hello? Welcome back. Welcome back. Hi. All right. Ooh. Is there anybody who wants to do a final blessing? Can I be one? Barb? Wants to come. Anybody? Anybody else? I do. Okay, good. All right, Shaga. Hold on. See if anybody else. I can too, Jim. Oh. Oh, Temple Beautiful, lovely. Thank you. Yes. I'll have Barb go first. And then, Temple, you want to go second? That's great. And then I'll have Will be last. You can be the follow up. <laughs> you can Clean wrap up. it all up. Clean up guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean up guy. Okay. Spill on L4. Okay. <laughs> May the love of God be with you all. May he give you understanding and peace. May he bring to you the light of yourself that is there always in the soul. Let you develop in a way that is pleasing to God and helps the earth to grow and expand. Oh, nice. Go ahead. Temple. Bushata Hohana, Siku to Buliki Ashatiana, Tisika Ahana to Bushudulo, O Shokaya, Hasi Walla, Ahua Manai, near to Ukojuba Anasa, Titu Kolo, Boja Aya Hanati, Kiashoti Anasata Ioto, Notiata Kala Ua Mashufua Piete Tianata, Ipizu, Zukalaha, Nua Piata Shukuanata Ya. Ipi shuku ajo no to shuku haya sata iyo to pola hanati ku ajo ta aza nati to apa ku oboja a a haya hanata ola ojo a nati ku oayata titiata no zoba kola diana sata a hana. Namaste. There is a light that shines for all and a truth that penetrates through all things. Help us all to understand and learn what that light is. Let the love of God show through and be a part of everyday living and life. Too often we forget God in our everyday world, but we need to pick him up and use him as a guide, to use him as our light, as our inspiration, as our love, as our compassion and wisdom. The world will be so much better when we learn that he is not there just for an occasion, but there for all time use, and there for us to be a part of, to glean knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from, and to be a friend in our time of need. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yes. May I hear my other you? Sell my other. Have a day. 
Ooh, lovely. There is a wonderful peace that is with us right now. Let us let it permeate throughout this place and throughout the world as we pass from this place to the next. Let us be bringers of peace and bringers of understanding and compassion. Wow, cool. Nice. <clears throat> yes. So Elijah spoke of uh, hypocrisy. And I, for one, am one of those who am a hypocrite at times. So I would, I'm feeling the vibration to, to offer a blessing or invite the holy fire in for me and anyone else who wishes to join in to ask the holy fire to remove the hypocrisy and in, in the hypocritic tendencies that we have as humans in this form so um hmm. dear god we invite and allow the holy fire to flow in through and around us all in every way and everywhere and everyone to remove the hypocrisy from us for all those who wish to participate and to remove all that does not serve any longer. All gratitude to God. Let the light of God shine into the shadows and make them bright and make them light. Let the light also permeate into all the places that you would have hidden within you. Let it become a brightness that affects every moment of your life, that affects the things and dreams for the future, that affects your aspirations and your inspirations. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, once again, the um, Galactic Reiki class will be on July 12th. January. I mean, January 12th and 13th. It'll probably be in the afternoon from 3 to 6 for two days in a row from set on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we haven't set a price yet, but it will be... There will be a couple extra symbols and the attunements for Reiki so that you can teach uh, others galactic Reiki. You will be uh, challenged by to know all the symbols and giving some extra breathing techniques and some really great information. So hope to see you there. I've already had four people respond and we'll see... Um, how many more of you would like to have that class? So I love you all and have promote a great day. Promote, yes. Promote your book. Oh, she said promote the book. I just got a note from Max that said we sold 49 copies of Here's your book. 49 copies just on the audio book. So that's that was really cool. Hey, where did this book come? We're plugging it every week, so hopefully people are buying it. Yes, it's um we're getting a lot of really good responses and i appreciate that so much i um i love that uh people are enjoying it so thank you very much it's a great book amazon.com yes so it's on um it's on paperback and it's in audiobook form and you can also get it on kindle yeah, you can also get it on audible.com audible audible.com it's um the name of the book is From the Galaxy with Love. 
<clears throat> from the galaxy with love. <laughs> oh, he said, I didn't show it well, well enough. Yeah. All right. I can't see if it's on the screen or not. So, all right. He's showing it. All right. There you go. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Anybody, anybody, uh, any more comments or questions? Just we love you. Thank you. Love and you too. We'll Thank you, everybody. Max. Next week will be Max. The week after that will be Jim again, I think. Yes. And then at the end of the month, we have Rob Gothier. So it's a nice month of December. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Rob Gothier is an amazing channel. I requ I request that all of you go to that. He is really amazing. I love, I love him. He's a dear friend of mine and just an exceptional person. So... Love him dearly. And Max next week. Yay! So I want to thank everybody for joining us today uh, in the Hangout and in the chats. And thank everyone who uh, watches later. And with that, we'll sign off. All righty. Have a great day. Much love to you all. Thanks for hosting, Mark. And thank, you thank for everybody having. for helping. Thank, thank you very much. So see